Yo, what's the deal? It's your boy Don. I'm back. And first and foremost, shout out to each and every one of y'all for commenting, liking, sharing that information, and subscribing. I appreciate y'all because I know it's been two months and I've been out here moving around, learning more about my business, um, getting comfortable in my new space, and traveling. But now it's time to get back down to business, sharing that knowledge, sharing that wealth with you guys to hopefully your journey to be easier than the one that I had. Let's get down to business. Starting your trucking company or Sprinter van company or cargo van, we're gonna break everything down in 2022. The first thing you wanna do is do your research. You know what I'm saying? Make sure this is something that you really wanna get in. Make sure it's something that you really wanna do. If you're serious, then go get your LLC. That's normally $125, you know, depending on what state you live in. And then from there, you wanna get your EIN number, that's free. They will email it to you if you Google that information based on where you live at. The third thing you want to do is get a business account. You will need your certificate of organization. You will need a percentage breakdown of what you own. If you have a partner in your business, you know, you need your EIN number and a DUNS number as well. And the reason why a DUNS number is important is because that's pretty much how you, you know, build your business credit. So it's very important um, that you get that to start if you want to you know open up get more vans open up a store you know get a building whatever you want to do getting your duns number is very important and, and crucial to you know your business the next thing you want to do is uh no matter if you're renting financing buying out or you know leasing you want to know what van you're going to be driving or what truck you're going to be getting because you know, it's very key and essential that you know what your VIN number is because that's going to determine how much your insurance is going to be. And there's two types of insurance that you can get. You can get the 100K to 300,000 liability, or you can get the commercial um, insurance, which is normally a million for general liability, you know, another million um, for damage, and then 100,000 for cargo. And I know some companies let you slide for 750. So it all depends. But I mean, I would say do the million, you know, because that would be more so worth it. You get more work that way. You kind of like limit yourself because some companies and some brokers won't deal with you unless you have that million dollar liability. So, yeah. Um, do you want to be over the road or do you want to stay local? Because, you know, more people make most of their money over the road. In some cases, you can make good money um, being local. It depends on your living situations. If you're single without a family, you probably don't care to go on tour, you know, but you got to understand that, you know, you never know where you're going to end up. You know, it's going to be some deadhead. You might get something back. You might not. You know, that's part of the business. You know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. And that can eat into your overall profit. If you stay local, you might take a, you know, you might get paid less depending on if you're leasing to a company or if you're doing your own, you know, hauling or if you, you know what I'm saying, um, dispatching for yourself or you're leasing to a company, you know, those those depend, you know, pretty much on you. Every situation is different. You know, this is not the easiest thing. You know what I mean? So this is just the reality of, of what it is. If you stay local, nine times out of 10, you can rock out with the 100,000, 300K if you're not moving that much freight. But if you're dispatching for yourself and you're required to have commercial insurance then you need your authority and that's what your you know MC will cover and you can go state to state with that. To make your authority go live, you will need your MC number, which is 300, your US DOT, which is free, your BOC3, which is like $80. And then you would need your insurance, um, which could run you, you know, up to 1800 a month and a deposit of 2000 or three, depending on your driver history, if you have claims, depending on if your credit is good or not, you make it really hit you over the head. So if you're not carrying that kind of freight, you know, it doesn't make sense for you to pay, you know what I'm saying, um, the 1800 a month, cause that's gonna kill your profit. You know what I mean? So kind of slow walk yourself into it. Uh, for instance, if you have bigger contracts that require you to have that, then go get that up, you know, up it. If you have smaller contracts and you're dealing with it and you're just jugging, then lower it. You know, you have that option to do the two. You decide that you want to lease on to somebody else's uh, company or authority or carrier. You got to understand that, you know, your, your funds is going to be, you know, a little bit less if you're doing it for yourself. 
So if you're somebody that doesn't want to do, you know, the bulk of the work to get more money, then maybe leasing through a company or on somebody else's authority is for you. If you don't mind, you know, doing the paperwork and doing the steps that you need to maximize how much money you can make, you know, then you should probably dispatch for yourself or be an owner operator. You know, the choice is yours. You have the choice. Nobody's going to do it for you. You know what I'm saying? I know for me, we come in, we're the lowest on the totem pole when it comes to, you know, pretty much um, in this business, in this game, when it comes to semis and box trucks, but we serve a purpose, you know, um, we save a lot of companies money, you know, they could be paying more for box trucks or more for semis and we can be moving it. So we do serve a purpose and don't think that, you know, you can't, you know, uh, hold yourself to a certain standard of what you are willing to move your van for or sprinter van for, you know, or not, you know what I'm saying? So just keep that in mind. You're going to get into this game, you know, you want to make sure you have the right equipment. You're going to need some ratchet straps. You're going to need some um, covers just in case if you're moving furniture. You get into this game, you want to make sure you have the right equipment. You know, you might need a back brace because you might be lifting heavy, you know, packages for FedEx or anybody you might do a contract with. You know what I'm saying? You might want to have coolers if you're dealing with, you know, medical stuff. If you're moving furniture, you want to have covers for the furniture. Um, you don't want to get it dirty or anything like that. You're going to need ratchet straps if you're going to deal with paint and other stuff like that. You don't want paint flying all over, you know what I'm saying, your van and messing up the order that way. You know, it just all depends. But you want to make sure you have all the equipment that you need to make sure that you can do your job as best as you can and be as efficient as you can. Because um, it's all about how many trips that you can get in, you know? The next thing I would say do, which I haven't done at this point, you know, I'm working on it as we speak, is to get a virtual address. And the reason why you want to do that, let's say if you want to, you know, sign up for certain things, get certain loans, get certain grants, you know, they're not going to just give you this if your business is your, is your address. You know, they want to see if you have a business address. You know what I'm saying? It's very important in this game. Another thing that you want to do is get build your website. You know what I'm saying? If you're trying to get your own contracts, if you're trying to cut the middleman out, the best thing to do is to have a business address and have your site in order so that these people can find your business and know that this is a real business, have your insurance in order so that they can rock with you and feel comfortable about rocking with you. You know what I mean? Set yourself up to be a real business you know you can half ass it but you know you're going to you're going to limit your opportunities of how much money you can make out here if you don't take these steps they're very important and you know take it from somebody like me i'm seven months in i still don't have a virtual address i'm getting on it you know what i'm saying and i'm getting on my website i'm trying to figure this stuff out i've been dragging my feet with it you know just dealing with the day-to-day -day, um runs and business that I have to deal with but you know like I said giving this information is supposed to help the next person you know do better and, and get to that the level that they trying to reach even faster so that's what my job is for and I take it very seriously the next thing I would say is once you figure out who you want to work with and you can find that out by going on indeed typing in independent contractors independent carriers owner operators you know what I'm saying you can go to um Shipley, you know, apps like Rody, you know, GoShare, uh, Carrier, Amazon Flex, you can do uh, furniture deliveries, um, you can search for, you know, medical, you know, routes that's available, you know, it's all types of different ways you can do it, you can lease through companies, you can go on the DAT board, you can um, expedite, you know what I'm saying, partnership with other companies. You can try to get your own contracts. It's, it's a bunch of different ways that you can do it. You know, um, you just got to figure out what's the best thing that works for you. And once you figure that out and you start making money, I advise you to save as much money as you can. I understand that you have uh, bills and responsibilities that you have to take care of, but make sure you're saving because if something happens with that van, then, you know, you're responsible for it. And if you can't run, you can't make no money. You know what I'm saying? The money be coming fast and people be spending, spending, spending. Save your money because there's some seasons that are slower than others. You know, it's, it's things that a pandemic can happen and the gas is raising high and the insurance is raising, everything is raising. Insurance and gas will kill your business. So you wanna make sure that you have money put aside, 
you know, for that or any type of maintenance that's going on. Never mistake movement for progress. You can be running around for this company, but it doesn't necessarily equate to you making money. So, you know, keep that in mind when you out here because these, these businesses, they're out to make money. You know what I'm saying? So they will run you and run your van in the ground. So you wanna be making sure that it's worth it at the end of the day. Cause what are you getting this business for? Just to say you got your own business or to actually make money. So make sure that you make your money and that you're saving money. It's very key and essential to making sure that your business lasts. Cause some of these companies won't even deal with you unless you have multiple vans, you know what I'm saying? Or multiple trucks. So it's very important that you save your money and reinvest your money back into the business. I don't care about the watch time and motherfuckers be trying to, you know, trick the system. All I care about is giving y'all this information, you know, in a good time so that y'all can still do the shit that y'all need to do and make sure that y'all execute. You don't just listen to this information. Make sure that you apply this information and hit me up. Let me know, you know what I'm saying, what the progress is. I want to know, you know what I'm saying? I hope everything is good. I hope the information was good for you. If you fuck with it, like, subscribe, comment, holla at your boy. I'm about to get these miles in. It feels good to be back. It's a little, you know, nerve wracking. It's been a while, but I'm here. I'm back. We're going to get to it, man. My next video um, will be, is this the best time to start? your cargo van business i don't know but we're gonna find out i'll let your boy